Well, uh, Elise the Cleric and Gimli the Priest uh, both look at you and just kind of give you the look like, it's what we do, it's our job. Yes, but... Well, he doesn't say that because they didn't say anything, though. But it's more of a... Uh, it would be painfully obvious on their face, like, the fuck are you talking about? It's our job. <laughs> well, did you want to say anything else then to that, or...? Uh, nope. That's probably about it. Kaz is gonna gather his belongings. Uh, he does, uh, give one final curtsy to the Ursa, uh, Ursa. And he does say, I'll, I'll be, I'll be making sure to come back. Is, is the healing guild, I know I tried coming yesterday. Is it generally open? Uh, Granger responds to that by saying, no, we are not generally open to the public. Uh, usually if you need something to be done, there is, uh, the guards that can get in touch with us, or you can request a, uh, a job from us on the board that's outside the door. Alright, Well, thank you so much. He bows. Ten leaves. Okay, well, uh, Cardam, I assume, left the building along with, uh, the other three. I'd presume so, yeah. Cardam. I'm sorry, what? I presume you leave the guards' <laughs> barracks after your test? Yes. Sorry. I was, I've been talking with Noah that the hell's going on with the and that's taken so long. Ah. Well, uh, so you guys have left the guards' barracks. Uh, Tate left before you, but someone has moved the fucking dice roller and needs to have stopped moving the dice roller. Don't move the dice roller. It's in the fucking corner for a reason. I, I didn't. Did someone try to use it? I found out why it was in the corner for a reason. That was a few sessions ago when I found out that it kills the script when you move it. Well, specifically, it needs to have hit the tile where your dice area is. And it getting moved off of that and hitting onto the board or anything else changes the reference and it... I don't know, some weird shit happens. I have to look at the script again. But I get and a pop-up on my screen. Because, and it can't get locked because it, like, breaks. It, it stops it from actually rolling the dice, right? Yeah. I, I, I had to look at the script again and see if I can make it better because uh, it, it, I, I have gotten quite a few errors on screen uh, last time, Tate, and gotten to this time about the dice roller. Yeah, I haven't moved it around at all. I know last time that was me. I apologize. I didn't know it was giving you airs. I put it back as soon as like I, I realized it was just fucking with shit. So. Could something be hitting it and moving it? Like hitting it from the side and pushing it over a bit? Possibly. Uh, regardless, that, that needs to be looked into. But, uh... Is Kaz staying outside the door, or is he going over to the guards' barracks? What, what, what is Kaz doing? Because, like, there's maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes before uh, Cardam and them get out of the guards' barracks? Uh, Kaz is gonna head over to the uh, guards' barracks to observe the competition. Okay, well, uh, as you approach the guards' barracks, you realize people are uh, coming out and uh, assume that the competition is over. Aw, I was looking forward to it. Kazro does look through the crowd, making sure to help to spot any of his friends coming out. The first friend he does spot, he is gonna kind of rush up to, shake their hand and say, I hope you did well. Well done. Well, if, he, if they were in the competition. As we're walking out the door. Man, I really hope we didn't, don't see that cause guy. No, not really. Wow. I presume you would see us walk out, Tate. We said we were yeah. walking out. He does walk up to all of you then, rather than shaking the hand. He goes... So, how did it go? How did the competition go? Oh, 
we only caught the end of it, but it seems he did well. By the way, at this point, I'm actually just like, I have that thousand yard stare in my eyes. So, and I'm very clearly not paying attention to anything, and I'm just going towards where the, um, towards over here to where the melee competition is going to be being held. And you saying that as player, uh, Unan looks at Kaz and goes, they did fantastic, but we have to hurry up. We got to get over to the, uh, melee competition. Uh, you guys would have oh, uh, about an hour, hour and a half to do shit around town before that starts. Yeah, it doesn't change what Unan said. You guys don't <laughs> want to get lunch or anything? That's fair. Cause had a very fulfilling breakfast. Lunch is an afterthought. Is there any nearby eateries? Do they have food carts? Well, uh, if Unan took, takes a moment uh, to look across the street as he comes out of the guard's barracks, yes. I, I rolled it, uh, nat 20, to find... He wants to find, a, apparently, a really nice place to eat. Well, uh, he sees a place called the Big Compass Deli. That's across the way, and uh, he can further see. down the line, he can see a place called Frame Takeaway. What do both serve? Uh, food. <laughs> uh, Big Gums Deli would be uh, what would we would kind of think in real life, uh, just kind of like a, you know, a ham beef stuff, kind of like lunch meat kind of thing. All right. Uh, Frame Takeaway would be more exotic foods that would not be common to this area uh in real life it'd be more uh eastern eastern style foods aka asia asian um does big compass deli have uh like steak chunks it's like edible chunks of steak, if you know what I mean by that. Like a kebab? Chisley? Uh, the, the same, the, the, you'd put them on a kebab, yeah. Uh, yes. And does, uh, frame takeaway, since you say it's basically eastern, does it have, uh, like a cup or bowl of noodles? Way to stereotype, Argus. Yes. Okay, uh, Unan is gonna go buy a thane, some, uh, steak squares is just what I'll call them, and then a cup of noodles, and put them together, and okay. before anyone says it, yes, Final Fantasy 15 cup of noodles. In cup noodles. How much would both of those cost? I'm thinking of a price right now, give me one. Fair enough. Hey, listen though, Lamb. Cup of noodles, alright? It's the best thing. God damn it. You, you know what I feel about the cup noodles? <laughs> you can you can have a picture of cup noodles, and at the end of the game, when you select a picture, and spoiler sort of alert, that it pops up to be your uh, picture at the very end of the game to commemorate, you know, beating the game, you can absolutely make it be cup of noodles picture. And there's just nothing funnier to me than an epic conquest, and the guy showing his memorabilia is a picture of a fucking cup of noodles. Uh, Marcus, 40 you know what I feel about that? Okay. Check bubble, Marcus. Uh, Unan happily pays it, and uh, whatever the rest of them are doing, he goes back to them, and he is basically taking the chunks of steak off of the kebab, and if there's like some vegetables or whatever, those two, pushing them into the uh, cup of noodles thing, swirling it around, and then eating it out of, uh, just eating it with his fork or whatever. I have expected you to say chopsticks. <laughs> I have expected <laughs> I don't think he has a good enough deck score for that. They handed him chopsticks. Unan went, oh, neat, and then, you know, thought they were just weird pencils and pocketed tossed them. Behind, tossed them behind him as he walked away. Okay, well, is, uh, anyone else getting food? I might as well get some. I will just grab, like, a 
kebab or something. Nope. Street food. Is it food you eat on the street or found Apparently, on the street? Who Unan's knows? Food is poisoned. He <laughs> fell over. I went to put my uh, mouse back on the game and clicked, and apparently that mouse happened to be over your character. Wasn't even looking. Uh, anyway, uh, if you're going to get like a thing or two of uh, street meat kebab, which is a uh, very low quality meat, by the way. Street meat kebabs, by the way, if you're wondering, are made from usually rat meat and pigeons. Delicious. Unless you were looking for something a bit more fancier than that, Jared. I was something that's decent quality meat, just just in a kebab, so that it's easy to eat on the move. All right, then we'll go for uh, twenty-five copper for the price set, where you actually get like pork and I don't know, maybe a few pieces of beef on it. That that isn't rat meat and pigeon meat, and some vegetables. Yeah, like a bell pepper, maybe to top bottom of it. Onion. When he was saying pieces of steak, the first thing that came to mind was Chislick, and then I looked it up and I realized that's a South Dakota thing. <laughs> it is, but I actually know what the hell that is. I like how both me and Jared's characters' first reaction were, hmm, I want some chunks of steak. Or beef. Whatever. Less steak and more protein, it'd be like if I'm on the run and it's like, I just want some McNuggets. Uh, so there's only going to be two of you entering the competition. Oh, the God damn Paz me. wants to enter the competition. Just kidding. He loses in the prelims. I don't think he'd do very well. Yeah, I, I have the uh, tournament style set up, which is uh, such what the Manly Test is. Set up for two players to enter it. Player two has entered the game. I mean, if if there was going to be an issue with it, I would just have uh, Unan tell Aethys to stand aside and he would join in so that you can just replace two NPCs, but since we only have two and we don't have three, we don't need to worry about it. Oh, if we had three, someone might have gotten eliminated. Because, like, keep in mind, the, the, this test is one of the major events. That's why it's being held by the portal. There would be quite a few people entering. So while we're there, then, real quick, Unan's gonna, um, do his hand gesture on his armor and, uh, read the crowd using Detect Magic. Are any of these people, uh, magically upgrading themselves? So, magical weapons, mage armor... Etc. For the test? Yeah, for this uh, test. So basically, if it was mage armor, as an example, they their bodies would be emitting um, conjuration. Or conjuration force, technically, but whatever. So just normal. Aura. Thought it was weak, but is Mark is normal for that? Or do you not know? Uh, for detect magic. Uh, well, for the uh, like mage armor aura and whatnot, is that is that weak it or depends. normal? So, so when you use detect magic on your very first round, you get the presence I... of magic or not, and then on the second round, as far as aura is concerned, um, I'm aware of this, Marcus. It... I was asking about mage armor, kind of like in particular. It it depends on how powerful it would be. That's the thing. What does that even mean? Like, if they... They, uh... Fuck it, I'm gonna look it up myself. It, if they had it destroyed... It doesn't say it for it. I just have Detect Magic how how that works. It doesn't say about... About that on Mage Armor. Uh, it is a normal aura. Uh, as far as you can tell on the contestants, yeah, some of them are using magic. Uh, you aren't able to discern 100% what each one's using, because there seems to be too many auras uh, both around them and the people outside of them. 
that are interfering, not to mention that the portal has a very strong aura. Fair enough. Uh, do I see one of the judges? Or people that are in charge? They're uh, shining beacons. You see a table where there are some people. Uh, tables over there, by the way, if you're wondering. Having so, the same area as the archery test, if you're wondering. Uh, okay. But yeah, you see the table and some people there that look like they might be setting up to be announcers. Alright, uh, I want to walk up to them. And uh, Aethas at my side, I go up to one of the ones that look like they're the setter-ups uh, and all. And go, uh, excuse me, are you one of the individuals in charge of the uh, melee test? You were there at the archery test, right, Marcus? Yeah. He took part in it, technically. Yeah. Just not very good at it. Uh, in which case, you would recognize one of them at the table as being the Kitsune rep from the archery test. Okay, so he goes up to her, or him, and goes, uh, Hi, are you also in charge of the melee competition? Uh, to which I respond, uh, no, I'm not in charge, I'm just doing the announcing, and, uh, you know, play-by-play -play actions, but uh, I do know the rules and whatnot, if you're wondering about those. I am. Uh, see, I have some friends going into it. Are they able to use their own weapons? Uh, yes. Fantastic. And, um... Uh... Are are thing are, are magical things allowed? Like if if someone had magical armor, a magical weapon, a spell cast on them, that kind of thing, or or no? Uh, magic will be permitted in the fights as long as it only augments their uh, their weapon or fighting style. Uh, so no magic missiles or anything of any kind. Well, what about things like uh, say mage armor? For example, you know, one of those, one of those not super high tier magics, but still pretty useful. That does not augment the weapon or fighting style, so it would not be allowed. Fantastic. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, just on the off chance that I that I spotted anything, and I can, I can, you know, help you guys out and train. Train to replace your announcing job later. <laughs> right. So he gives her a little uh, smile and or him. I can't Marcus, remember if it was a boy or a girl. Is it a is boy the, or a girl? Good question. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, give Marcus, them. Yeah. Is that train going to be the whistle you're blowing? Yes. Um, gives them a smile and a wave goodbye and heads back over to the group and goes, Yeah, sir, I can't help you guys. I just found out the rules and... Uh, I was gonna put mage armor on you so that you were harder to hit, but it turns out that's illegal, so I can't do that. And uh, quickly looking, the Kitsune rep does not have a gender assigned to it, nor a name. It is a oh, generic he NPC. Needs a gender and a name. He you just assumed it's NPC. gender. I'm gonna talk to the Kitsune. Kitsune ignores you. After the competition. Not like you have, like, a thousand NPCs to keep track of. Technically I do. Just most of them don't actually have stats. <laughs> I gotta consider everyone in the crowd. They are technically there, even if they are not physically there. But that would probably break even me. Having individual models for every single NPC in the crowd. Uh, anyway, you guys doing anything else then? When he comes back and mentions about the mage armor. Well, I suppose that's good to know, so that means probably can't use my uh, any of my spells, because none of them are specifically for weapons. Right, you got. You can only use... Uh, I see Karnum's off to the side, and I go, Karnum! And I wave him over. So, the rules are you guys get to use your own weapons, which means everyone else gets to, and magic that uh, helps your weapon, or helps your, your style... Um, that kind of magic's allowed, but not like mage armor or obviously magic missile or whatnot. But still, yeah, anything you got that's not weapon affecting looks like you can't use. But that means there might be competitors that will use it. 
Are you sure they would? This is a big competition. There are a lot of judges. They said it's allowed. Just not things ah. like mage armor. So most certainly they will be. No, Iron, good night. So maybe one of us should use that mace for the extra damage. Oh, the adamantium. The only issue is, like you said, for, we're finesse fighters, so it's it's going to hit harder, but it's going to be harder to hit with. Uh, you guys know what the Mersenwall modifier does to the maze, right? Yes. Extra d6 and all damage is non, non-lethal. Lamb, why did you post blank? Yeah, I was wondering the I same was, thing. I was going to post something, but then it's like, eh, it doesn't need to be said right now. It can be dealt with later. Well, uh, as you guys are talking, doing the thing, blah blah blah. Uh, looks like they have uh, finished setting up and people are starting to gather for the actual event. Alright, where do we need, do we need to be like taking places somewhere? Probably underneath the giant platform floating in the air. <laughs> oh god, there's three of me. <laughs> I, I, I copied yours to make the NPC markers. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm just being a dick. Well, the relevant NPC markers anyway. Well, uh, as they uh, finish up in the main square, uh, you can see a wooden fenced off area, and inside are uh, enough. It is enough room for two people to duel. And uh, once the uh, crowd has finished pouring in, and it seems like everything is uh, packed. I was about to say compacted, but that just sounded wrong. <laughs> we squeezed everyone into a tiny space. Yeah, not now. Uh, we the, have become a singularity. And the uh, Kitsune rap starts uh, announcing like they did for the archery test. Uh, Alright, welcome everyone and possibly welcome back. Yesterday we had the archery test and had the wonderful show then. Uh, so what will this year's melee test hold for us? If you're competing in the competition, make sure you sign up at the table by the portal. Uh, essentially where you asked the question, Marcus. Which was on that side. I'll go that way since it's probably around the crowd. Yeah, and uh, other people start working towards the table to get their names signed up. And uh, the Kitsun rep continues with, We'll be having a single elimination tournament contest, so expect to be here for a while. There's plenty of merchants nearby for food and drink, and I'm sure they'd appreciate your business. Uh, magic will be permitted in this fight, as long as it only augments your weapon or fighting style. No magic missiles or healing of any kind in this combat. Uh, and as a uh, mechanical note, uh, all daily usage of things will reset per fight and uh, go back to what it was prior to the tournament. Uh, meaning if you could use, um, uh, l l let's assume Mage Armor was permitted. Uh, if you could use Mage Armor two times a day and you used it once prior to the tournament, uh, it'll be two times during each fight. But it will go back to only being able to be used once after the tournament. So think of it as a uh, temporary elimination of restrictions while still preventing you from overusing it in a single fight and in a day. Does that make sense? Anyone else? Essentially, before each fight, all of our stuff's getting refreshed. But once we finish the competition, it goes back to how it was before the competition. Correct. So we're basically being put into a different instance, quote-unquote, every time. Yeah. Does that count my numerological gift? Like, is, it, is that being able to be... Oh, um... Hmm. If not, then not, I understand, because that would be kind of fucking insanity. But I figured it should be brought up. Uh, the answer in which to give you then, Lamb, is no, that will not reset. Okay. Uh, the reasoning I'm going to give you guys the ability to reset, like, number of times you can use something a day, 
uh, it's essentially you're going to be refreshed in between fights, and I, I can't see Numerological Gift being able to be refreshed in that way. I mean, like I said, I won't complain, because that would be insanity if I could use that every fight. Uh, any other questions uh, about like the uh, the resetting mechanics or anything? Remind me one. I guess not. Don't look like it. So uh, once everyone's uh, finished signing up. Uh, the actual competition begins with the fights going ahead, uh, giving a good show along the road. Various people winning from their skills and abilities, including uh, Karnum and uh, uh, Sandeep. I was trying to remember who the fuck else was entering. Uh, crowd cheering them on, including uh, you guys, where they make it into the quarterfinals. Uh, which is where we're actually going to be picking up with more detailed fights and info. I don't feel like going through a 32-person or 64-person bracket. Damn. That would have been a great time, Phil. We would have been here for days. Yeah, I know. No, I even put that in the DM note on the, the file. Which is where we'll pick up with more detailed info. A 32-person tournament isn't something to run through with details. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, after a brief interval of everyone uh, eliminating each other and getting down to the final eight. Yeah, a piece of paper with everyone's names on it are shown on a board nearby the table uh, in a bracket formation where participants can see who they will be fighting and what style of uh, person, aka class, uh, they are to help prep them for their fight. So uh, a few minutes are available for you guys to look over the bracket list. Uh, the bracket is as follows. Uh, it is going to be a barbarian versus Cardum, a fighter versus a monk, a rogue versus Sandeep, and uh, for the final two in the eight, final eight, is a inquisitor versus a anti paladin. Anti paladin? Yes. Yeah. So basically, it's a paladin, but evil. So the member that we ran into from the Paladin's Guild is an anti-Paladin? No, that was the Inquisitor. <laughs> ah. Nobody expects the Paladin Inquisition. I want to mention something about that fight, but it'll have to wait until it happens. Does that guy notice us, by the way? The Inquisitor? Yeah. Let's find out. High or low? Uh, hi. <laughs> he notices, but he does not really acknowledge you. When he, uh, notices, which I'm assuming means in short, more or less, he, his eyes just kind of stop on us for a second, I just give him a excitable wave and, like, a thumbs up. He... he... Continues looking at you while you're doing that before looking away. I know. I figure it's more just the fact that uh, when we went there, they were like, "Yeah, he's not. He doesn't really like anybody." So now Unan's just oblivious to it and is like, "No, he likes me. He talked to me." So uh, a few minutes have gone by, and the announcer calls for the first two participants to uh, stand forward, which is going to be the barbarian and. Uh... Lamb. Right. Oh, well, board doesn't exist. Oh, no. Nope. Damn you, physics. Oh, no. Nope. So much. 
God damn it. Fine, we're doing it over here. He... Have expected your character piece to fall through again. No, it's actually on the board thing this time. I, I know, I, as I was saying, I have expected it to fall through again. Oh, well, I thought you meant you have expected it to fall through the entire table. Damn you, physics engine. Be better. No! Don't tell it what to do. Uh, let's see, without a name, this barbarian. Jimbo. Okay. Uh, the Kittitoon uh, announces, First up, we have a half-orc barbarian named Urbosh, who is wearing some split mail armor embroidered with her clan's emblem and wielding a... Uh... An Urgrosh? No. Aww. He's wielding a thing apparently I did not type out. Dual Urgroshes. Triple Urgroshes. He's Saji from One Piece. Now that's how you ask this, Peter. I don't know why I didn't write that down. Uh, he is wielding a a double orc axe. This is essentially a double weapon. It's double axe. But orc style. <laughs> I don't know how else I could describe that weapon. And uh, on the other side is, well, uh, Cardum. A uh, Dampier monk wearing stuff. Lamb, what the fuck are you wearing? Probably just a simple tunic. I'm not wearing anything, like, impressive or of no... Would you might even call it a monk's outfit? Uh Might just be a traveler's outfit at that. Good enough. Uh, let's watch these two go at it. Uh, fight begins. Watch them go at it. Freezing. And, uh, I would initial... Uh, initial? Brain? Uh, start up, uh, turn order, but... I can't just do it between me and you. <laughs> yeah, well... I think we'll have enough... It should be easy enough to keep track of in a two-person combat. I hope. Well. Pretty sure the orc's going first. Oh, yeah. Wait, what did you roll? I got a nine. Aha. Uh, -huh. uh, without actually looking at the stats of the orc, I rolled a nat 20. Yeah. I almost got it. <laughs> but no, it decided to be a five. Lamb, how much, how much uh, HP do you have? Thirteen. Not enough. <laughs> Alright. Maybe adjusting the amount of HP the orc has. He had 37 before. Just be glad you're not facing the Inquisitor or anti -Ballad. Yet. Probably at all. Uh, each square, by the way, on this board is indeed five feet. <laughs> That's good. This is a proper five foot grid. And uh, if you're wondering, the uh, texture is indeed the normal road texture, just made smaller when I made the image. So it may look a little weird, but yeah, it works. <laughs> so, for the regular roads, you use the regular texture, and it's 25 feet. For this one, you use the smaller texture of the roads, and it's only 5 feet. So confused. I missed the point. What's your point? So, aka, these roads are larger. I, I understand what he's saying. I, l I love it. It's awesome. Because it's kind of back ass words, where these ones are the texture is smaller, but they represent. Or, I, I, don't mind me. I understand what Tate's going for, but apparently I can't explain it either. The point is that the fucking tile was not actually twenty five feet. I just didn't feel like putting twenty five feet worth of detail into a single tile. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, Urvash goes. Uh. Or it is thirty feet. And uh, that is his turn, because he doesn't fucking have ranged weapons for a melee test. Alright. Okay. I'm also going 30 feet. 
Well, uh, in that case then, uh, Urvosh is going to be charging at you, Lamb, and make an attack. Uh, what the hell was your AC? Uh, 17. Well, unfortunately, Lamb, he, uh, is able to hit. Charges against CMB. Eh, so CMB, same thing. Doesn't matter. Dealing uh, seven points of damage. Cool. The button hit on my keyboard actually worked. Also, uh, for reference, it is not possible for you to die during this competition. I figured. I think it'd be a little cruel for you to die during the competition. Die today, we get to go on an adventure. What? They said, and then 2020s happen. Like you, with that one competition where you critted to crit to crit to crit. You mean the archery test? Yeah, yeah where he rolled a, nine, a 20 and then a 19 and then, or whatever. And then when he finally didn't crit, it was a 6, which counted as a crit for him. Or and you know, the crit one. fail. Yeah, and then the crit fail. <laughs> uh, the lamb, it's your turn, by the way. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use an elemental fist. going to hit him with acid. Throw a brick at him. That is a, I can find it, 16 versus AC. Uh, it hits. Yay. I only need to switch to Claire on this one real quick, since that's a different damage type. He takes six acid damage and five physical for 11 total. Well, uh, Urvosh is, uh, definitely looking very injured. Okay, and this is a question I have to ask because I don't know if this is a thing in this edition. If I'm attacking with my second hand, is that a thing I can actually do? You mean a second attack? Yeah, with my second hand, like, if it's an offhand, but saying there's no such thing as an offhand for monks? Because if there isn't, you'd have to be using Flurry of Blows for him. Alright, Flurry of Blows is a thing. God damn it, I'm a moron. I, I assumed you were using Flurry of Blows, to be honest. Yeah, I I completely forgot about Flurry of Blows. What is a monk? Probably not Flurry of Blows. I don't know how the fuck Lamb forgot that. Another 16. Which <laughs> also hits. Kill him. Murder him. For... not nine. For seven. Well, uh, with a quick couple jabs to him, uh, you seem to have hit much harder than even you may have thought of doing, and uh, Urbosh goes down. If you're wondering, he got put to negative one with that second hit. Ouch. Yeah, he, he put me down to six with one hit. I was like, oh, this isn't going to go well. Yeah, uh, if you're wondering, though, uh, his weapon would have done three times for crit, so, like, it was going to be the one time where it'd be like, okay, he's going to win if I fucking roll a crit for him. Yeah, I, I forgot charging was a thing. Yep. Up to, uh, twice movement speed. And still allowing you to get one attack in. Full round action, though. Yeah. And I mean, it has to be in a straight line, but in this case, that doesn't really matter. And at least 10 feet. Alright, well, with the uh, fight over, the uh, Katsuna Rep announces uh, that Cardam has won the fight. Uh, the crowd cheering and whatever. Whatever the crowd, how old the crowds do no normally. Maybe maybe they're throwing some shit on the field. <laughs> at the orc, because why not? They have literal just bags of manure just throwing shit onto the field. <laughs> because why not? <laughs> because, yeah, why not? Uh, well done! Next up we have an Oriad monk named Athero wielding only his fists and wearing some light clothing versus a catapult fighter named Ajun wearing some banded mail wielding a morning star and a tower shield. But uh, before they get onto the field, let's give the other two a moment to get off the field and uh, heal it up as needed. Etc, etc. Uh, the announcer goes on to continue saying, uh, wonder how the monk will be able to get around all of that armor. Uh, let us begin this fight to find out. 
The uh, fight begins between the Oriad and the Catfolk. The fighter taking their swings and missing against this very agile monk who retaliates with uh, specialized earthen fists. Uh, hitting the armor and making dents and injuring the fighter. After only a minute, the fight ends. Uh, fighter defeated and on the ground, surrendering to the monk. Which the uh, Kitsune announcer was on, saying. And there we have it, folks. After a brief fight between them, uh, June yields to Thera, making Thera the winner of this combat. Let's get some healers in there to help June out and clear the stage for the next fight. Uh, which some healers and guards enter the arena to escort both of them out of the fence area to prep for the next fight. Healing them along the way. So, uh, the next up is the third fight. So, everyone. Uh, the next battle between Lurkin, the rogue Tiefling, will be facing against uh, Sundeep the Undyne. Let's see what they can do to make this fight interesting for us. Since our two make their way out of the field, and the uh, fight will begin once they are there. It doesn't really matter, by the way, how far apart we start, it's just kind of like beyond opposite ends of the field. I'm not gonna be so picky about that. Well, I mean, it does so far as javelins have a certain range. You're throwing weapons in a melee test? I have them. It's a <laughs> melee test. Do you know what melee means? Close range, and javelins are close ish. <laughs> That's not how that works, Jared. It's not how that works at all. It's not how any of this works. Also, uh, starting rounds are a bit of an issue for me. All right. <laughs> Wait, why is that? Wait, isn't that only for surprise? In a surprise round, I don't get action. But in the um, in the presence where there is no surprise round, I am staggered for the first round of combat. Ah. Well, may I recommend starting further on the edge then? I wonder why the combats are taking a moment to actually start up. It's because I apparently did not make character sheets for these two fucking people. No. So, like, I'm quickly mocking up some info. You can blame PC Jet. Okay, let the uh, fight begin. Initiative. Fuck is up with me rolling initiatives. What'd you get? Twenty-three. It's approved initiative feed. Eight. Okay, well. I rolled who's... a one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, seriously? I got a plus seven to initiative. Damn. Jared five, rolled five a five from uh... Dex and two from trait. Oh. Jared rolled a what is combat? I, I didn't I, even even add the fucking dex bonus that this rogue gets to initiative. So it should be a 28 on initiative for uh, the rogue, but if it means anything, Jared, the uh, rogue's gonna be a bit harder or a bit easier to hit compared to what lamb faced. After the first round. Uh, anyway, Lurkin uh, begins the fight by doing stuff. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 
five. Five moving up to here. Turn now, Jared. I will move to there. And now this feels like chess. <laughs> Just a bit. Which, uh, by the way, we could actually play a, an hour's worth of chess. There's an achievement for that. <laughs> there, there legit is an achievement for playing chess. Oh, I, I, I know. It's just like... Okay. Lurkin will go there. Oh, so Jared, how much HP do you have? Eleven. Eh. On par with this uh, NPC, then. I think I'm gonna charge. Okay, go for it. I'm presuming you're going to be attacking as well. Yes. Someone to shut that baby up, as you can hear in the crowd. You talking about one of the contestants? <laughs> 14? The oh, fuck? It hits. Oh, we both uh, just got for that charge. Yes, slam. Nice. I rolled a fucking 7. So, uh, Jared, how much damage do you do? Four. Yeah, four points of damage. And that's it for me. What'd you hit him with? Light Mace. Hmm. Well, uh, after Lurkin gets hit with the Light Mace, he uh, retaliates with his dueling dagger. Possibly hitting you. We'll find out here in a second as I make the roll and move the camera over there to actually make the roll in the first place. I do have a minus two to AC. Pretty sure this is not hitting. But, uh, does a, does a 10 hit by chance? Nope. nope. Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, uh, after attempting to hit you and missing, he's gonna be taking a five foot step back. Ascending his turn. Five foot step forward and another swing. Does a thirteen hit? Thirteen matches. But the does he have the feat that lets him win a match? Three damage. He does not land. Damn. This was the thing where that was. Is that three point five or is that this? Uh, both have it. Uh huh. Uh, Jerry, you said three points of damage. Yes. Okay, well, anything else you're doing? Nope. Which is, uh, Lurkin then tries to respond by attacking you again, and rolls a... Actual hit. Thank god. Uh, 21. I assume hits. Yes. And he deals... Or Lurkin deals, I don't remember gender off the top of my head. Four points of damage. Yay, low damage rolls. Uh, Lurkin will not be doing anything else, and uh, instead stand there and wait for you. Perhaps he is hoping that you do not hit him. I will step to the right, re reposition, and attempt to do what he does not want. And what is the crit range on a mace? I would assume 20, but uh, light mace? Yeah, it's 20. Damn. Uh, 24 for hit. To hit? As a 20. 
You mashed with 13, Jared. You hit. He took uh, six different forms of total defense in one turn. <laughs> Five damage. Well, uh, God, these combats are not lasting that long. As I say that, uh, the rogue Jorgen goes down. Also got put to negative one HP. Coincidentally. Well, uh, the announcer actually doesn't say anything about this competition, about this fight. Uh, the healers and guards from the previous fight, though, come out to uh, escort you two off the field, uh, healing them as needed. It almost feels like the uh, announcer was unimpressed by this fight. <laughs> smack, slash, smack, slash. And the rogue's like, if I could hide in plain sight, you'd be so dead right now. Exactly. <laughs> Find someone behind you getting sneak attack. Uh, anyway, uh, here's results for him. And uh, with the, the contestants off the field, uh, you can hear announced. And finally, we have an interesting competition between Bjorn Dagen, a human inquisitor from the Blessing of the Bound Guild, worshipping Iomede, versus a female drow anti paladin called Yokono, worshipping the demon lord Kazel. Uh, they will be facing each other in this final quarterfinal tournament fight. Uh, both contestants are making their way out to the, the ring. Not naming them, just making sound, actually sound like people walked and beep boop. Beep boop, I'm bot. Pretty much. Uh, who will win this uh, in this fight of religions? Let's find out now. Fight! Uh, the fight begins, both standing there for a minute, looking at each other. Squaring each other up before the drow anti paladin takes the first strike, charging at Bjorn. Making contact and slashing at his half plate armor with her bastard sword. Uh, Bjorn makes an immediate Game counter drop. attack, taking the heavy hit with pride as he lands his butchering axe into Kono's full plate. Both of them stand and look at each other for a moment, waiting for each other to make a move before Bjorn leaps back and casts a special light onto his blade. Weapon augmentation. Uh, momentarily dazzling in the drow, and Bjorn takes advantage of this by lunging into Yokono with his axe raised by both hands to press into her armor. Uh, to which the Kitsune rep announces, uh, oh that seems to have hurt a lot, looks like Yokono may be down for the count if this continues for much longer. Uh, Yokono grins uh, as she does the same as Bjorn a moment ago by leaping back and casting Unholy Sword on her blade and uh, readying her strike for when Bjorn comes at her again. Do what she does, trying to slash at her face directly, in which she dodges and... Brain skipped a line there momentarily. And uh, immediately lands a hit to his back with her now unholy bastard sword. Seriously injuring Bjorn, causing him to fall prone. Uh, you can hear announced, wow, just look at that power. I think now's a good time to remind the contestants that killing is not allowed. You know, because Bjorn's prone and... Yeah. Uh, in which case, uh, Yokono sighs at the mentioning of the rule, and rather than dealing with the consequences, she puts the blade against his neck and tells him to surrender. And uh, Bjorn refers you to ever admit defeat to a vile creature as her, to which she responds by puncturing his legs with the sword and hitting him in the back of the head with the hilt, knocking him unconscious from the pain and bullet loss. So instead of killing him, you know, injuring is the next best thing, right? Obviously. Uh, it appears we have a winner. The Kitsune rep announces, Yukono has won this match. I feel sorry for Bjorn. And uh, quickly hit the healers in to make sure he doesn't bleed out. Uh, the healers quickly rush out to heal the major um, majority? Brain? How the fuck? Majorly injured Bjorn. Uh, along with multiple guards and mages to prevent further combat. As, uh, God forbid, a Inquisitor and anti paladin will stop. And uh, to ensure both parties remain civil. Uh, to which you can hear being said uh, by the Kitsune. All right, let's take a break while the arena is cleaned up a bit. 15 minutes sound good to everyone, sounds good to me. Uh, now's a good time to get some food and drink from the nearby merchants if you haven't already, as I expect the semifinals and the final to be a spectacle. 
Uh, on that note, we could actually uh, end now if y'all want. Save the semifinals and finals for next week. Uh, semifinals, finals. Sure. I mean, it is uh, three, which is the time that we wanted to start calling it. So. 